Hi, my name is Colin Thompson. I'm Program Leader for BA Fashion Studies at the University of Derby. And with me today, I have Jeff Griffin, designer, and Donald Christie, photographer. Um, Jeff and Donald have come in to talk to students, um, uh, to introduce them to their collaborative um, uh, relationship that I've ha had, I think, over 14 years now you've been working together. Yeah, 14 years, 14 yeah. long years. Um, and the purpose of that is to um, assist students understand how a collaborative process of this kind can um, can work productively and effectively um, for the benefit of you know pe people um, in separate disciplines. So uh, the question I'd like to ask you guys is what do you hope the stu students um, will take from being exposed to your particular um, collaborative process uh, and one that has its own history and in a sense um, her heritage of development over a number of years, the number of years we've been working together. Uh, let's start with you, Jeff. Well, for, for me, um, f what I wanted the students to really get from this is really just um, when you're in a, a university environment, you're surrounded by the university and, and you're not so linked with the industry um, mm. of what actually happens. You know, people do placements and uh, internship, but uh, which I think is very important. But uh, I think what I wanted them to understand is I went to Derby and this was my college and where I went from here to I've now uh, arrived in uh, North Devon and I have a farm and I have a fashion world and I do catwalk shows in Japan with, uh, with stores. So I just wanted them to understand the journey and how important it is to work with talented people and we've worked with a lot of talented people and, and build relationships. That, that's the collaboration is having someone that's strong, someone that has their own identity. There's no point surrounding yourself with the same type of people of you, as yourself because that won't bring anything to the table. So by working for different people, like we've worked with Banksy in the past, Peter Kennard, Stanley Donwood, um, we've worked with different stylists. And Donald, now we, we first started working on a Channel 4 film together and it was a process. Now, that's only a short, short um, a small area of fashion is the photos and the shoot. Mm -hmm. And we'll have other areas which is about building a collection or doing a catwalk show. And we collaborate with different people on different parts of the collection. But the area we're, we've been talking about today is creating imagery. And I think mm -hmm. it's uh, interesting for the students to understand how to create imagery, how to work with photographers, and how to collaborate with different people with different skills. Right. Um, and we've been working now with, with Donald for 14 years since uh, the Channel 4 film. And it's a, it's a relationship which has grown. We, we probably admire each other more as we've worked more together. Yeah. But it's, um, it's, it's such an important area is to understand that it's a long journey life. And that journey has to be fruitful. And, and it's always important to work with people you admire and people are better than you, you know. I'm always saying to students, always work with people better. So if, if you're in Derby, try and get a job abroad, you know. It's, it's a global world, you know. Mm. Step out of what is your comfort zone and go and work in Japan. Yeah, yeah good point. And I think it's, um, you made a poignant point about um, working with individuals that are very different that can bring something um, collectively, uh, can in, uh, produce a rich... Mm. Uh, a community of um, yeah. creative activity uh, and p particularly within the context of this brief and this project which is dealing with heritage which can link to um, ideas and notions of identity, personal identity and how you can work with that personal identity um, in, a, in a space, in a world which is dominated by um, the manipulation, if you like, of heritage for commercial uh, yeah commercial purposes to push product? Well, I, th I think uh, what, what we wanted to do was um, we put some work into this this uh, project with Derby because um, we wanted to like go back through the last 14 years that I've worked with Donald. Mm. So in the end, we've gone back to the beginning. So we've gone back right to finishing Derby then going on to St. Martin's. And it's an interesting to document and actually see that we've changed so much in the sense that we've I've, I've worked in Italy, I've walked, walked all over the world, but there's some lines which are, are the same as when I was here mm. to what they are now. 
and there's ideas and a way of expressing ideas. So a lot has changed. And yes, you know, we have got a farm, we live on the cliff tops, we have our own collection and we sell online. But really, a lot of the ideas are the same as from the beginning. And I think with me and Donald, it's, it's always been about expressing ideas, taking ideas and moving it forward. And that's been the beauty of having a long relationship. I, I think there's too much of a tendency to jump. You know, a lot of people jump for what is the latest and the coolest at that moment and don't give enough, enough time for ideas to develop. Um, and what, what we've seen here is that we've had a rich period and uh, it's developed ideas over a long time. Very well put. Um, so, Donald, what are your thoughts on uh, what you'd like to see students take from uh, um, the expo exposure to your collaborative relationship? To really sort of develop the idea of collaboration. I mean, we'll do the word collaboration said over and over again, but in mm. fact, it's key in the commercial field, in, in the, the more of the fine arts, people operate in maybe in a more individual manner. But in commercial, creative world, everyone has to work together. And so people have to find common ground, mm -hmm. sometimes very quickly. And Jeff and I have established a long working relationship. But quite often, um, certainly photographers, will have to establish a relationship with a client, with a collaborator, over a very short period of time, and actually have to execute the, the commission or the work mm -hmm. in an equally short period of time. So developing collaboration, but probably more, the most important part of that is communication. But that isn't just a case of sitting down and talking. If I want to engage you in a, in a process, mm. what do I communicate? Well, I have to communicate ideas. What are those ideas? Well, that's based on research. That is followed, then followed by a concept. And then, during our conversation, that then leads on to producing something. Right. Where we're working, you're bringing something to the table, I'm bringing something to the table, and we both walk away with something different. It's a new piece. Mm. It's a new, a new piece of work. Um, and of course, in photography, the photographs are only something that documents. So when a photographer collaborates with a designer, as I collaborate with Jeff, I'm documenting his clothes. So I might be deciding where those clothes are seen. They're standing on the edge of a cliff or on a beach or whatever they happen to be. But the camera's just recording something that's happening in front of the camera. And that something is the clothes, is the model, and the situation. And that's all part of a kind of, again, it's a part of a, a line of communication and trust. So through discussing an idea, evolving an idea, moving forward with an idea, there's a point that, as, as a creative, as a designer, mm. you have to let go, as Jeff lets go of, of his clothes and lets me get on with what I'm doing. Because he, I think he said earlier on, and maybe earlier on today is there's a point where your, your specialization stops and you kind of realize you've got to release something to another professional to be able to carry on with the project. So communication yeah. and collaboration, I think, yeah. Um, that's raised one particular um, topic I'd like to um, respond to, which is the idea of uh, documentation. Um, documenting, uh, you said in your own words that uh, you, what you're doing is documenting the work of Jeff, in this case, someone else. And I'm interested in linking that to something that Jeff talked about during the talk today, which was um, fashion being bigger than you know, what we wear, and that everything has uh, the potential to have um, uh, a fashion con um, concept uh, applied to it in terms of how, how we we interact with things and experiences in our lifestyles. So I'm particularly interested in um, the image as, you know, the, the, as fashion, or the part um, it plays, still images, or moving animated images, but essentially the area that you work within, um, the part that they play within fashion, because I think they do promote fashion, they do partially create fashions, particularly through the media. Um, and within your collaboration, you're doing a number of things, because I think in terms of recording, um, that links to archiving, which we've had a really good demonstration of today when you're going through sort of your, your history. Mm -hmm. And we've had a sense of, you know, uh, material being archived. Also, um, 
the objects that we, or the images that we were looking at, um, having sometimes social, sometimes political um, messages or motives behind them. And then added to that, I think there is this dimension where um, image is also fashion, not just experience, but maybe the experience of looking at an image. And it's really interesting to hear your viewpoint about that, because I think it's particularly one that comes from a photographer. Um, and I, I just wondered whether, whether you do acknowledge the, work, the uh, value that you play and other photographers play in this whole world of fashion and how it moves and how it grows and how it develops, or whether you, you don't, uh, or whether you disagree with what I'm saying, really, is what I'd, mm -hmm. like, I'd like to have. Um, I think it's possible that the, the idea of the, the, the photographers and archivists has, has actually gained traction over the last few years. Right. With the, um, the sartorialists, the, the online bloggers, the straight up in the street. And, and Jeff mentioned I did straight up pictures but earlier, but in fact that really comes from August Sander, then and I, and Terry Jones ID picked it up, um, and certainly Terry Jones is very strong in the idea of documentation. And I, I am a product of the ID school of photography in some ways, yeah. in as much as they were happy to carry my stories yeah. in whatever form I chose. So I think it becomes a natural part in photography to end up being an archivist, and especially when you have a long-term relationship. And one of the things in producing images, there's two kinds of images, or maybe three kinds of images that are produced. One is the, the kind of straightforward, straight up, straight to camera photograph of the person in the clothing. Now the location can change, it could be a beach, it could be a cliff top, it could be anywhere. But you take everything else away and ultimately you have a person standing yeah. with the clothes looking good. There's no point photographing the clothes, they've got creases and crumples or stains. or there's, It can go to a point, but at the end of the day, the, 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 the designer needs to be able to look at the clothes and say, well, that's a fair and true representation of what of my vision. Yeah, absolutely. There's another part of the photographs which is kind of involving a little more of the energy and the vision that might be coming from the photographer and the designer together, which is that the, um, we work a lot with um, climbers and surfers and free runners, and, and you know, we point at a cliff, and we do do this. We point at a cliff and say, can you get up that? And they'll go, yep. We can do that. That's great. And so that, that adds to the story of working with surfers on the beach. And um, putting, they're coming out of the sea and the wetsuit's still wet and they're putting on a griffin coat. And that made sense. It made sense for them to be in that environment and they were real people. So even though it might not strictly be a straightforward fashion shot, it's actually adding a lot to the story because it's giving a kind of background, a context right. for a vision. And then the, the final part is the additional so you probably may not see so much of it today, but Jeff did show the picture of the dead fish. And he, when I was photographing it, it wasn't actually a fish. It's a, I think it's a smooth hound, so it's like a miniature shark, headless on, on the beach. And he wondered, well, why is he doing that? But when that image is put in context next to the more documentary images, he could see the play between the two was starting to evolve a further dimensions to the story. Yeah. So this idea is not just documenting the clothes, it's documenting ideas, um, kind of creative ideas. It's documenting a feeling that it wants to come out, not only from the designer, but from that collaboration with the photographer. Hopefully, they both share, should do, and we do, I think, some kind of vision. And through that, we can work together. We're like fish, we're like two fish, we're like this the whole time yeah. in ideas. And Jeff will turn around and say, you've got to photograph that. And I'll turn around sometimes and go, I don't want to do it there, I'll do something else. And he kind of goes, okay, you do that. And sometimes well, I that's the creative it. process, isn't that's it? The yeah. that, that's the dialogue. It's, it's always better having less or such a tight brief that you have to really get your brain working to work yes. out to get out of it, you know? Um, being given everything is... Uh, and I think, I think what is interesting, we've been doing a project recently where we were trying to second guess the client. And... Um, this almost upset the, whole, upset the whole process because in the past our collaboration is that I bring Donald in, we talk about the idea, and then my, my job is to trust the people I bring in because I bring in the best people. And then you run, and then you enjoy the process of running together. Um, where suddenly we were doing the same thing, same people involved, but we were trying to second guess what the people in Japan wanted. And then you're going, 
do they want it this way or that way? And we did it our way, but it lost that 10% of edge. Yeah. And people could see that it had lost that, you know? So when people look at the images, we might have shot the griffin in like only 10% of the time we had, but we produced better images because we were just running free. Uh, when it came to theirs, they were going, we prefer yours. And we're going, but yours, we spent so much time on them. <laughs> Yeah, but there's something missing, and the missing th element was we were trying to second guess what they would like. Yeah. You know? So you you do have to just run with your gut. So yeah. so to put that in context, yeah. of course, Griffin is a range we worked on for a long time, and we yes. can just do. I mean, I say to do it for eyes closed, of course. We we actually put a lot of thought and, uh, and effort into what we're trying to achieve. Yeah. The difference was that the, the the diffusion commercial line, which was the uh, uh, Griffin Heartland, so suddenly we're having to compromise and right. change. And in fact, this season, I think we found a solution, yeah. didn't we, really? Yeah. Because initially what we did was try to make it kind of maybe a bit too fun. Um, and, and in fact, we had two models. And they, they were good. They, they, they looked fine. They were cool people to work with. They were fun. I don't like using the word cool. But they were, you know, they were good people to work with. And the Japanese came back and said, we want advertising. We need... And they actually sent an image from a, a, a kind of double-page spread in a magazine, glossy man standing on kind of um, platform next to the water, mountains in the back, yeah. and they were going, yeah. So we did it, and then um, we worked for a model, and that was, he was dre boring, dreadful. We'd, we were used to kind of these, these real people who do real things. Um, he, it's a very insecure model, didn't really kind of work, didn't really get that well received in Japan in the end, did it? It's, it it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's great to be able to look back and laugh at things, and I think the mistake we did on uh, one of those shoots was that um, we, the images all together looked like a fantastic story. But when we actually, they were trying to pull out the one image, which was the iconic image right. of the season, to use as an advertising campaign, we didn't have it. We had one which was landscape, but landscape means you need two pages, or you have to reduce it down quite a lot. So we got to the point where going, we didn't realise that. But that's that's the... There's always the risk of the way we work in a creative way of running and and experimentation that sometimes you don't bang it on the head. But I think this year we did bang it on the head. So, so with the, and what helped us is the weather. It's summer season, and as usual, working with Jeff, it always rains. I, I bring the rain with me when we shoot. So we had this question. It was a really misty day in the beach. It felt like autumn, but we're doing summer wear. And I'd started a, a few, couple of days to go f forward just saying, okay, let's just have people smiling. Let's try not to be cool. Try to just, in a way that we have fun when we're shooting, let the models have fun, let everyone just have fun. So we had the models charging around on the beach, piggybacking each other, chasing each other, and they were getting something fresh. There was just kind of, they were getting life from them. Yeah. And it was interesting because then that separation from Griffin was, was coming clearer because it was kind of, we're allowing freedom, we're allowing energy right. to come out of the pictures. And the Griffin, so the, some one key part of the Griffin shoot became black and white of surfers on the beach. Serious, older, more luxurious because it was like you know, edgy and gritty. Where the one that we're doing with Griffin Heartland was fun and the same models, same people, same location, same photographer, same designer. But suddenly there was it was moving apart. So you could actually see how we were taking something from both and giving them an identity, you know? Yeah. So we had two, really two, two seasons where the two yeah. of us were kind of scratching our heads, like, okay, right, now we've got to pin it this time, we've got to sort it out, and it was just that kind of point that it came. And now next time, it's going to be easier because we're saying, okay, okay, well, we can actually think more clearly about how we're going to create these situations, how we can set things up, who we bring in. Yeah. Uh, we did have models that are coming in. We changed the models this time. So we had a guy, Joe, who's a climber, and he, well, he must be in his 30s, isn't he? Yeah. It? But he's just got such a great attitude to life. He just brings the picture alive. He brought the shoes alive. He's just like, you know, no, no cares, no, yeah. no, no preconceptions about... He'd never modelled before, no preconceptions about what should happen in front of the camera. So that was okay. exciting. All right, thank you, thank you. I think what's clear is that over the years, you've established... Um, a methodology, a process um, that's quite fluid, and um, what underpins that? I mean, it's quite stimulating and beautiful to observe that there is what 
uh, this, these core elements uh, um, within it. And a big part of one of those elements I would describe as trust. I, mean, I, I think you mentioned that word yourself and respect um, to allow each other to work in an individual way and then bring something to the table which is collective and I think the trust and the respect that you have for what you each other does within you know your separate disciplines allows another space for you to experiment and constantly you know invent and discover new things and I think that's obviously something that is probably uh, um, of the greatest value to you both and, and that's really what I'd like the students to um, be aware of because I think that's quite I think it's a great thing to have in in in, in a time when we're saturated yeah. with, well, with I processes. Think, I, think, I think we've said a lot yeah. um, with the students and they are going to miss 50 percent of it but it's, <laughs> it's a process you don't learn everything in one day of it's course not, you know yeah. they, they've just heard about our whole history uh, of working together and um, starting Griffin, starting in Derby and ending up where we are. And uh, so there's a lot to take in and they're, they're young and, um, but they will learn in t as time. And that, that's where I think that's what I'd like them to take from it is life is a journey Great. and it's a, it's a journey that you have to enjoy and it has to be something you have to stay true to. And I think the one thing I, I found with all the work I've done recently is you have to put 120% into everything. So if in a year's time you look back and you go, it wasn't that good, at least you know you put 120% in. You can't blame yourself for only putting 50% in. So just create the best work for every opportunity you do, you know, because at some point it will come back and it, it will smack you in the face, you know. Yeah. So the, the one thing I'd add to this is that the reason that we can do this is that we yeah. both have a very strong creative arc. Yes. Where we started in our creative careers and where we are now is part of one line narrative of creative development. Mm. What we're lucky is that, that those we have dual arts that seem to touch each other as we go along. But as Jeff pointed out in his presentation, if you want to succeed, if you want to get ahead, you have to be adaptable. You have to be able to work and collaborate and communicate with people, but be adaptable. That's a lot easier if you already have a clear path yeah. that you're following. Yeah. You, can, you can allow that path to meander a bit, but you're not getting diverted and you're not getting lost. And I think that's quite important as well. Great. Well, then, there. Thanks, guys. Thanks cool. for coming in. And yeah, pleasure. To Thank, the you students. Thank you. Thank you.